Hi guys, Robbo46 here, welcome yourself to MotoGP21. So at time of release of this video, the game is out. At time of recording, it is not, it's uh, a week before, but um, yeah, this video will be out on the day of release of the actual game. So today, I'm going to be doing a first impressions, I've not played it yet, so we're going to jump into quick mode, do what I usually do, go into time trial. Um, that's fine, we'll do that offline. And uh, yeah, so let's pick a rider. So we'll go with a MotoGP rider. Um, who shall we go for? So we can do official teams for our custom rider or customized team. We'll just do an official rider. Let's let's see who we're gonna use. We won't use an Aprilia. Um, I mean. Let's just use Rossi. That's who I usually use. So you can have your carbon fiber testing livery or the official livery. We'll go with the, with the official livery. Uh, track. Um, so Portimao is in the game, which people will be very uh, happy about. I know that in the preview builds uh, it wasn't shown, but it is there, so don't worry. Um, so it's either going to be... Actually, yeah, let's go with uh, Mugello, just because that's the track that I'm most familiar with. So we'll go with that. Um, actually, what historic tracks are there? Um, before we get going. Oh, so we've got Bruno, Donington, and Laguna Seca. Okay, so yeah, Mugello. Uh, riding aid, so... Elect uh, right, automatic brakes are off. I've already got the riding aid set to pro. Um, assisted front brake is off. Uh, brake input modulation is off. I want automatic. Uh, manual even gears. Manual start on. Um, electronics are real. Acceleration input modulation. Disabled. Full control over acceleration management however increasing the risk of unexpected skidding of, of the wheels. Um, corner in. Off track help, no. Okay. So that is all fine. That's how we want it. Race options, clear. Time and fuel consumption, yeah, that's off. Uh, balance performance off, bike recovery. Put that on, just because I want to see what that's actually like. Rewind, turn that off. Trajectory age are off anyway. Okay. We're actually ready to get going. So let's head over, see how long the loading takes. I have turned the music off as well, uh, but there is menu music and that. So this is the Xbox Series X version, I should have said at the beginning. Um, although it is in the uh, title of the video itself. Right. So, we're using Rossi, of course, in the Yamaha Garage. Um, so, obviously you've got your tyres there. It's medium-medium. Um... Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think I'll go for a soft rear. Um, suspension, we're not going to do. ECU. Okay, so it's basically the same as before. However, with MotoGP 20, you had power mapping 1 and 2 and 0. Um, this time you got 1, 2 and 3. Anti-wheelie, engine braking and traction control was uh, 4 bars on the previous game. And now it's five. So what we'll do, traction control, if we put on three, engine braking, uh, put on two. Anti-wheelie, put on three. Power mapping, of course, we'll keep on three. Okay, that's fine. Not going to do anything with the uh, transmission or anything, or braking, brake discs. Um, we'll keep it as what it's already on. I'm assuming the game's already decided that's the best brakes, but we'll soon find out. Uh, okay. Right. Let's go. I'll tell you what, we'll come out the pits. We'll come out the pits. Because it's going to take me a few laps to kind of get used to the, the game itself. So Rossi doing his pre-outing uh, ritual. Bending down. Okay. Out we go. Yeah, just uh, rearrange yourself. <laughs> Tell you what, it looks nice and colourful. 
Right. Autopilot is very long here. Autopilot is very long. Hello? <laughs> Are you going to let me have control? Front brake is already cold. Okay. Okay, well the sound is definitely different. Right, let's see how we get on then. Oh. Oh. Okay. There's a lot more feeling happening through the, the gamepad itself. Lots more vibrations and stuff. Oh, the front end feels a bit dodgy. I'm trying to play it at the moment how I play MotoGP 20. And it's working a little bit, but at the same time it's not, if you see what I mean. So... You've got to be more delicate with the throttle if you've got, um, you know, some of the settings turned off. But yeah, you know, the, the brakes feel a little bit worse than, uh, as in, not as much stopping power as uh, MotoGP 20. Oh. The camera done a weird thing there. Well, there's the, uh, there's the crash. <laughs> Now we get to see the bike recovery. So we're getting up. Now is the camera locked to the bike? Yes it is. It is locked to the bike. How far away can we go? Because I mean. Unfortunately we're not running very fast. <laughs> okay you can go a fair way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think they should run a bit bit quicker, to be fair. That's not a very fast run. Oh, okay. You literally run to your bike and then it's... Oh. No? Okay, I destroyed the bike, apparently. Okay. Right, let's go back out for a flying start. So you don't press the button to pick your bike up, you literally just go near it and then it goes into a cutscene. But yeah, you got a lot more vibration than that, like I said, from the controller itself. Sound definitely does sound more meaty. Wow. I've turned motion blur down to medium. That's, that's very wide into there. Overheating the rear brake a little bit there. You can feel the rear on acceleration. You can feel it slipping a little bit. That front end. I might have to go for a soft front, actually. Let's go back to the, the pit, because that front end is not feeling that great. Um, let's go for a soft soft front as well. Um, I might change my rear brake. It did seem to be overheating. Um, so that's got that one. We'll go for that one instead. See if that helps. Right. Fine start again. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more vibrant, the colours than that. And graphically, it does look better than uh, MotoGP 20. Just without doing the side-by-side -side comparison, which I will do at some point. Side-by-side -side with MotoGP 20. Obviously, you've got a new HUD in the bottom right-hand corner as well. Sense of speed. Oh. Definitely feels uh, better to the previous game. That's very wide again through turn one. Okay. Obviously, I'm playing this before the actual day of release, so there may be 
some patches or something. I don't know if there is a plan day one patch. Oh, that's wrong gear. Whoops a daisy. No, rear rear brake is overheated again. Okay, this is where I kept going wide. I've done it again. Can't get I can't use my usual braking marker for that corner. But one thing I have noticed is that the rear doesn't come off the ground like it did in MotoGP 20. I know that was uh, a lot of people's issues. I mean, it's, it still tries to come up a little bit, but nowhere near as much as MotoGP 20. I know people had uh, a lot of issues with MotoGP 20 when that first came out. It's just one of those things it takes a bit getting used to. Um, I didn't actually see a setting for manual tucking, so why, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's any manual tuck again. Which is a bit of a shame. I much prefer manual tuck. The inertia of the bike itself feels better as well. Feels more realistic. Okay. Right, let's try and actually do a valid lap this time. Oh. I tried to do my little trick of getting stopped um, a little bit better for turn one. And it didn't like it as much as it did on 20. So yeah, I think uh, a smooth play style again is going to be much more favourable than a, an aggressive play style. Uh, MotoGP 20 was um, similar in the respect that you know, to, to, to get the, the best lap times, you had to be smooth. Um, just, oh, oh, oh. Well, we stayed on track that time, but we did have a big slide there. Um, like, over the years, I've had to smooth my play style out, style out a hell of a lot. Just because, you know, I was being too aggressive. I was wearing tyres out and stuff. And, uh getting the bike in all sorts of shapes and just not really doing decent lap times so yeah if you want to uh you know get the best out of it you got to try and smooth that out a bit okay well i think we are going to do a lap it's just got to sort out this s's this s's that's that's a good sentence the s there wasn't too bad, but on the entrance I was a bit um, sliding on the brakes a bit. So there is more movement on the brakes itself from the bike. And obviously you're going to have to go a bit more careful tipping into corners whilst on the brakes. Okay, so we've actually done a lap now, a uh, valid lap. Oh, okay. Rear does, rear does come up in the, in the air. But we still got it stopped, so it doesn't hinder you as much as before. That really did take me by surprise, I'm not going to lie. Okay, that's too wide. Making too many mistakes. Getting lots of vibrations on that. On acceleration and on the brakes. Well, I've yet to feel... Well, I've yet, let's, uh, yet to lose the front into a corner, shall we say. Not yet, anyway. Okay, that was better through Casanova there. But yeah, a lot more movement from the bikes. It will be interesting to see, you know, when I start career mode, how the AI get on when they crash. Are they going to have to go and pick their bikes up or are they going to respawn? I mean, you would have thought... Obviously, to make it fair, that they would uh, have to go and pick their bike up. That's too wide and validate, yeah. I think for the next lap, I will be quiet. Just so that you can hear the, hear the, the sound of the bike itself. Alright, so I'll come out the final corner and then I will be quiet for a lap. And see how we get on with actually concentrating as well.
Okay, so we've done a lap. We've done a, a lap without talking. You can hold quite a lot of front brake into a corner. How much front brake does it take to actually lose the front? Oh, you literally just have to go like full brake to uh, lose the front into a corner. Right. Is that going to be it for the bike? Have we destroyed it or... Yeah, I was expecting them to run a bit quicker, I'm not going to lie. Is he going to pick it up? Hello? Yeah, he's picking it up. Getting back on. Engine's still going. Okay. Yeah, off-track help is off, so... Feels... Obviously slippery. Is LB still clutch? Yes, it is. Okay. Actually, let's do a start. Let's do a start. Oh, that sounds better. That sounds much better for uh, when they're doing a race start. I mean, previous games, it sounds really timid when they're doing a race start, but that sounds much more like it, much more aggressive. Right, let's um, go through the, the camera angle. So we've got that one. We got that one, which is an onboard one, but um, there's another onboard one. We got a helmet one. Yep, yeah, there we go. There's a helmet one. Oh, okay. The rear came up in the air then. I'm going to crash. There we go. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's why I don't play on board. Uh, is he going to pick it up? I think he is. So yeah, I guess the next step is obviously manually picking it up. Manually getting back on. Um, and marshals as well. That's going to be like the next step to bike retrieval, I think. Because, you know, you, you always see marshals coming out to, to help the riders once they've uh, crashed so yeah that would definitely be the, the next step for that but yeah first person I just want to go down the straight in first person because the sense of speed is going to be really good oh yeah the bike it is squirming quite a bit on the brakes Oh, I clipped the grass, but that's fine. I don't know why the logo's flickering a bit there. Oh. It's very wide. Okay. Right. So that is all the camera views. So yeah, just to sum up, you know, the, the bikes do feel different to MotoGP 20. Um, like I said, the, the bike inertia feels more realistic. The braking, it is going to take a bit of getting used to. Um, but you know, after a few laps, you'll be okay. There's a lot more, prov obviously providing what settings you use. And if you've got everything turned off um, with the the braking aids and stuff like that um, then yeah you will feel more through the controller there's a lot more feedback through the controller the bikes move around more on the brakes like that so it's almost like if you try and tip in whilst the front brake is on there the bike tends to try and push a bit wide uh, but sound is definitely improved graphics are improved um, sound is definitely a big thing like I said especially like just doing a a start there, the bike sounds more aggressive, more beefy, um, more like a Yamaha, so that's good for this one. Obviously, I've not tested out the other bikes yet. Curbs! I haven't tested the curbs out, actually, although I just did accidentally, and they felt a bit, bit too bumpy, but I know they are meant to be bumpy, but yeah, no, they need to be a bit smoother than that. 
because they do use curves in real life and not lose, you know, barely any time using them. But yeah, so far, happy with uh, the progression for MotoGP 21. Glad to finally have been able to play it. And uh, yeah, I will be putting out some more videos today and over the next few days as well, obviously. And we will be starting career mode soon as well. So looking forward to that. But yeah, this has been a, uh, a first play and first impressions of MotoGP 21. First impressions are good. It's just the, the front brake, you're going to have to get used to that. Um, so front isn't overheating, so that is the optimum brake to use. Obviously when it overheats and that, uh, as we've seen in uh, one of their previous videos, that you're just not going to stop in time for, for corners. But yeah, that's been my first look at MotoGP 21, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more content. I shall see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys next time. See you!